morning everyone welcome to another smart knowledge you vlog vlog number 15 and we're gonna discuss today why stock markets are basically a manipulated cesspool so if you watched our last vlog then you know that we informed our platinum client members that uh, drop in spot gold prices up to $100 an ounce was coming as early as November 7th and then on November 11th when gold prices dropped to $1,265 an ounce we basically warned again that there was a very strong possibility that gold was going to pull back to $1,180 an ounce so when gold pulled back to $1,100 $180 an ounce again we reassessed the situation and we again assessed that spot gold prices were going to drop significantly lower than even the $1,180 price. So now that in yesterday's markets in New York, the spot gold price descended to as low as $1,157, is the drop on, in gold prices now over? Well, there's good news and there is bad news. The, Let's cover the bad news first. The bad news is unfortunately, it's uh, probably very likely at this point that gold, spot gold prices and spot silver prices are going to fall significantly further than their current price right now. As I look at the market, spot gold is $1,175 and spot silver is at $16.87. So that is the bad news. The good news is that moving around billions of dollars of paper gold in order to raid the spot gold prices uh, temporarily in order to set a pessimistic tone about precious metals should not change anyone's mind about where the price of physical gold and physical silver is heading in future years to come. So as a quick aside, be sure to subscribe below, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel if you wanna learn about how deep the deceit runs when bankers try to convince us to incorrectly value gold and silver in terms of their respective massively devaluing fiat currencies, whether it's in euros, whether it's in yen, whether it's in yuan, whether it's in dollars, instead of their correct and proper valuation metric. So in our last vlog, I told you that I would discuss this rampant corruption and manipulation and options, options pricing that was evident in our initial hedging strategy to cope with what we saw as a minimum of a $100 drop in spot gold prices. And with all of our clients, we, did, we opened up hedges in the form of multiple put options against the paper gold GLD stock at different strike prices at different expiration dates that we determined would become profitable and very profitable as spot gold did indeed drop over a hundred dollars an ounce as we believed it would be and then we closed out a number of these options at very very decent profits of 42 percent 50 percent 60 percent and 75 percent profits these profits actually should have been much higher at the prices we actually close them out at and then we actually opened up a second tranche of gld put options once the first original tranche became really profitable and we actually unfortunately had to close that those out at one tr one tranche we sold off at practically break even prices and then the second tranche at a uh, slight loss when considering the large profits we took on the original tranche of gld put options so net we were uh, still profitable, very profitable on these, uh, this hedging strategy. So um, let me explain why it is my strong belief that HFT, high frequency trading algorithm programs have taken over setting prices, not only for stocks in global stock markets, uh, but also in setting prices for options contracts and why they totally distort pricing for options contracts. So when we had this hedging strategy open and we were using, we were buying put options on the paper GLD stock, there were times when our position was open that our, the pricing of our put option contracts would drop 30% 
on a near negligible move in the underlying GLD stock. So I'm gonna actually, actually took screenshots as this was happening live, so I could put them here so you could see what I'm talking about. So of course, we know that movements and underlying stock option prices due to time decay and whatnot are gonna move greatly if their they, expiration date is very close. But we're talking about massive movements in price with very little movement in the underlying share price, basically where sometimes the movement was negligible in contracts that still had three, four weeks to expire, which should not happen. So if you look now at some of the screenshots that I took, you can see that every single strike price above and beyond the current market price at that time. So we're talking about maybe 11 different strike prices uh, for the call options, not only the call options, but also the put option contracts where everything is bleeding red and quite significantly as well. So this, of course, shouldn't have happened where you have all call options with strike prices near their current market price and all put options with strike prices near the current market price bleeding heavily red. So uh, this not only happened for the closest expiration date, but like I said, it also happened for uh, contracts that are expiring two weeks out, three weeks out, four weeks out, and everything was red on both sides of the equation. As you know, um, basically if the underlying share price is rising, then the call options closest to the strike price should basically all be green, but all be going up in price. If the underlying share price is rising and if the underlying share price is falling, then uh, the put options should all be red and vice versa. And then actually when I check the iShare Silver Trust uh, paper SLV, the same thing was uh, going on with the options pricing that is based upon the SLV share. Because here you can see a screenshot where I took where the SLV share, the underlying SLV share is only up 0.11%. Again, a very negligible move, 0.11%. But yet you have some call options that are dropping 50% in price valuation. So again, although these largest movements of a 30% drop in uh, GLD put options based upon a movement of negative 0.20% and a 50% drop in call option pricing based upon a movement of 0.11%, When I looked at uh, the expiration dates that were two weeks out, that were three weeks out, we still would witness every single call option, every single put option uh, within striking distance of the current market price, all bleeding red. So what's going on here? Again, like I said, I believe that it is uh, bankers are using high frequency trading algorithms or HFT algos to basically spoof prices to get them to cause momentum to go in the direction they want so they can basically skim money from everyone even people that are correct so even if you uh, purchase put options and the price of the underlying share drops you're going to lose money and if you bought call options and the price of the underlying share goes up you're going to lose money as well Yes, I do understand depending upon the ratio of uh, call options to put options that if a lot more money is going on call options, that call options will become expensive and that does lead to certain price distortions. I also understand same thing, a lot more money is going into put options that uh, the put options are going to be more, more expensive and it's going to lead to some price distortions and you're going to have to pay a higher premium for a put option than a call option in, in these cases. And also I understand that because uh, I traded options for a long time that at market open there can be, again, price distortions because of thinly traded, uh, thin volumes for, for trading in call options and put options. But as you see on the screenshots, these were screenshots where everything was at bleeding red. Call options, put options, no matter what direction the underlying GLD and SLV share was moving, whether it was moving up or down, everything was red.
So that should not happen no matter what, even if call options or put options are expensive at, at the current time. And um, in, in addition, I've been trading options for a long time, so I've seen instances where right, the underlying share will go up 5% uh, during intraday trading, but yet uh, underlying call option closest that was now in the money that was out of the money before the 5% move that moved into the money, which should be trading much higher, actually dropped 20% on the 5% move higher. So I know that bankers use HFT algorithms to spoof prices and to uh, conduct a lot of illegal activity in options markets as well as the underlying stocks as well. So the other thing I actually wish I had taken, uh, you know, screenshots uh, of this happening because I've seen this multiple happen multiple times in the past year as well if I'm trying to buy say a call option where the bid ask spread is two dollars and ten cents and two dollars and twenty five cents if I put in order to buy a 225 then it should execute right because that is the best sell price for that particular option I want to buy a 225 if that's not a fake offer then it should execute but normally uh, what happens is if I put in a um, a buy order at two dollars and twenty five cents for that call option contract it immediately goes up to two dollars and thirty cents immediately i mean instantaneously the minute i hit the buy button it goes up from 225 to 230 because what's what bankers have used these hft algos to do is they have made people chase price on the buy higher and then they make them chase uh price lower when they want to sell so as soon as I canceled the order at 2.25 to buy, then the uh, best ask price goes down from $2.30 back down to $2.25. I place an order to buy $2.25. Again, what happens? It goes up to $2.30. So again, and then if I put in another order at $2.30, it immediately goes up to $2.35. I cancel it and wait 30 minutes. It goes back down to its original price of $2.25. So they play this game all the time. And people that trade options know knows that this is what happens, that bankers will skim money from you, make you chase pr prices higher when you want to buy. And likewise, they do the same thing when you want to sell, then automatically the price of the option goes down. They make you chase a lower uh, sell price. So you get less money than you deserve on the sell price and you have to pay more money than you should on the buy price. And this happens all the time with impunity because this is a criminal action because those orders should not be there unless they're spoofing. So obviously uh, those offers or those offers should not be there. Those offers to buy and spell, sell are all spoofing tactics that bankers use and they employ their HFT algorithms. Recently, it came to light that Goldman Sachs executives were holding about 1 million stock options that were set to expire at the end of November as worthless because they were below the exercise price. And what happened was miraculously in one month in November, the underlying share price of Goldman Sachs stock exploded 30% higher. And all of a sudden those millions of executive stock options that were literally worthless then had a valuation of hundreds of millions of dollars. So when I went back and looked for the past seven years, that 30% rise in Goldman Sachs uh, share price was the largest monthly rise in seven years by far. In fact, to find uh, a monthly rise that was higher than the November 30% uh, rise in Goldman uh, Sachs stock price. You have to go back to 2009, the year that followed the 2008 US stock market crash. So it was during that recovery when Goldman Sachs stock had better monthly returns than, than 30%. But then again, you have to go back to an extreme period when the US stock market collapsed by 50% and to follow that recovery to find a month that exceeded the abnormal price spike that happened in November that turned millions of Goldman Sachs stock options from having a literal value of zero into hundreds of millions of dollars. Here. So what you had was the largest movement of the stock price in seven years that coincidentally turned a million stock options from worthless into hundreds of millions of dollars that allow Goldman Sachs executives to cash out at 
tens and tens of millions of dollars, probably cumulatively over $50 million of profits. And then they ended up selling three times more in dollar amount of Goldman Sachs shares than in any month in the last five years. So uh, when, when I saw that this happened, I wondered, is this type of pricing fraud still happening in options and call options on Goldman Sachs stock. So what I did is I'm going to insert again a live shot that, that I took that would not be on, on, available now. So you can't go back in hindsight and find these live screenshots. You have to take it when it's actually happening. So I had an idea when I heard about this and I said, hey, I wonder if there's any more fraud that's going to happen in call options on Goldman Sachs stock. So I went and I looked for abnormalities as far as the ratio of call options to put options and indeed I found one that was expiring December 2nd which just recently passed in which the number of call options outnumbered the number of put options 25 to 1 at a strike price in which Goldman Sachs stock had to rise I believe it was somewhere like 5 to 8 percent in just a couple days in order for that to be profitable so why would anyone put 25 times more call options than put options on something that doesn't seem feasible on the underlying which seems like it would be much riskier to bet that Goldman Sachs stock is going to rise five to eight percent in just two or three days otherwise those call options are all going to expire worthless but when I saw 25 to 1 I said you know what it's probably going to happen because there's not anyone that's going to bet 25 to 1 and that kind of skewed uh, make that much of a skewed bet and that 25 to 1 bias uh, Actually, I remember the last time that showed up was when the, there were 25 times more put options than call options put on, placed on United Airlines the week of 9-11. And of course, what happened? United Airlines uh, stock plummeted once United Airlines planes crashed into the Twin Towers in New York. So ironically enough or not ironically enough at all depending upon how you view these types of events that the 25 to 1 ratio of put options to call option was so abnormal that the securities exchange commission in the u.s investigated that and wanted to know who knew that 9 11 was going to happen who knew that united airlines stock was going to crash but yet when it is flipped there's a 25 to 1 ratio of call options to put options in Goldman Sachs stock. No one seems to care or they turn a blind eye and look the other way when obviously there's massive fraud going on because as you can see in these screenshots that I took it during that day, that particular strike price, those call options, closed at $13 a contract the previous day and then Two days before they are set to expire, they exploded to $388 a contract. So in other words, if you had just bought $5,000 worth of call options, that's a 30 times increase in 24 hours, you would have turned your $5,000 into $150,000. But yet no one in the SEC think, thinks that's a fraudulent enough case to investigate. It's all on the up and up because it's all done by bankers. So this is basically the deplorable rampant systemic fraud that happens in paper markets. But I guess the silver lining in this is if gold and silver prices drop to as low as I think they're going to drop, then the recovery should be massively strong. Because remember in the last video I said all of 2015, except for about four or five weeks, um, I said stay out of the paper gold and silver assets because I believed that uh, gold and silver prices would remain weak for all of 2015. On the other hand, this year I see this as just as a temporary drop and I see a strong recovery into this because there's a lot of things that are different this year than was the situation last year. So if indeed gold and silver spot prices drop just use this as another opportunity to add to stack more physical gold and physical silver and i'm sure you will be happy you did because after the bottom is finally in um you're gonna see a very very strong rise in gold and silver prices again and in the event that i'm wrong because you can't be right 100 percent of the time like I said, even though we opened up more hedges, that gold, spot gold, spot silver prices are going to drop even more. It doesn't matter because that's all they are. They're hedges. So they're offset 
if gold and silver start rising again, then we'll just unwind the hedges and the hedges will have done their job just to offset the price direction and the other gold and silver assets that we currently hold. Okay, so that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe below. And until the next vlog, thanks a lot for watching. Let, you, let us know too uh, if you've seen any of these type of fraudulent pricing distortions that we've witnessed live uh, yourself when you've been trading options. Okay, until next time, thanks a lot for watching and so long.